Yes. One of them, the answer is no. And for the one that the answer is no, you can definitely give me a logical explanation as to why there's no way you'll ever get it. You have to think about that because there are, after all, an infinite number of sequences to try. So whatever argument you, you give me, it has to work for every sequence. If you're going to show me that there is a solution, you just have to give me one sequence. That's a little easier. So I'll spend a couple minutes playing with it, and uh, I'll tell you the answer if, if, if you don't find it. I don't think there's any special cleverness to being able to find it. If you happen to see it, that's fine. Should we look at this one together first, maybe, a little bit? Let's think out loud with this one. If we were to try to get it, Joe, you have an idea? And I just have a question. Yeah. Uh, the string lengths don't have to be the same size. Like, you don't need the same number of rows on one side as the other, either, right? Yeah, you do. Yeah, you, when, you, when you pick, say, one, two, three, you're getting this, this, this all concatenated together, and this, this, this all concatenated together, and the sum of all those symbols has to be the same to match. Yeah, yeah definitely. Okay. Well, then isn't that the problem with the first one? Here? Since their lengths are different, there's no, well, I guess there's some combination you could I might be able to combine these so that the sum of these might equal the sum of these. I might. Length. It's certainly a good place to look for. I mean, if the length, if the length of the left is always smaller than the length of the right, then there's no way to do it. Because the left side always has a string that's smaller than the right side. You can't get a match. So there's got to be at least one on the left that's bigger than its pair on the right, and one on the right that's bigger than its pair on the left. Otherwise, you have no chance. But all of them satisfy that. So that's not going to help us. Let's look here for a second. If there were a sequence to solve this problem, what would it have to start with? Which one of the numbers, 1, 2, or 3? Right, two and three immediately get mismatches. The zero and the one, the one and the zero don't match. So it's got to start with one. Let me write down a potential solution here. So one, zero. Here's our sequence, one. One, zero, one, zero, one. Here's the A, here's the B. OK. Fine. So what's next? Can I continue? It's got to be one or two. And it's got to be one. Three. three. It can't be two, right? Because 2 would have the 0, 1, 1 showing up here, and that wouldn't match. So that's out right away. Can it be the 1? No, because the 1 in front of the B would. What would happen? What's the problem with this 1? We would have a 1, 0 here, and we'd have a 1, 0, oh, 1 here, and that's a mismatch. So we can't continue with the 1. Well. So maybe we continue with a 3. Let's try. So this becomes 1, 0, 1, and this becomes 0, 1, 1. That looks very similar to what we had just about 10 seconds ago. We had a string that was exactly identical, but this one had an extra 1. And the same argument we used before about how to continue is going to apply now. Can we continue with a 2? No, because it mismatches. The 0 mismatches the 1. Can we continue with a 1? We could try. We'd get a 1, 0 on the top, and then a 1, 0, 1 on the bottom, which would mitch, mit, w this one would mismatch with that 0. So we can only continue with 3. Well, that's great. Same argument again. We can only continue with 3. We can only continue with 3. The only way we can possibly have a chance to match these strings up is continuing with string 3. 1, 3, 3, 3, dot, dot, dot. And none of these ever even out. You always have the bottom being a little bit longer than the top. <laughs> we can buy a vowel. Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> Vanna White starring in the post correspondence game. <laughs> It's an undecidable question, but here we give away prizes for solving exactly that. <laughs> well, I don't know. I was never any really good at math. Uh. <laughs> By a vowel, indeed. Yes, well, we can't do this one. That one's right out. The answer is no. So now maybe you go back and think of writing a program you know, that looks for things like this. 
a program that checks for these logical inconsistencies. Maybe there's a way to completely encompass all the logical things that could go wrong, but there isn't. That's the nature of undecidability. There are essentially an infinite number of different things you would have to check for. There is nothing finite that describes all the possible reasons why the answer here is no. That's really what undecidability means. There's no finite way to describe all the things you want to check for. If I want to accept all the strings of 0 star 1, that's a nice finite way of describing an infinite number of things. But there's no finite way to describe all the infinite pairs of things that don't have a solution to the post-correspondence problem. So you're saying you can do the first one? I'm saying you can do the first one. Yes, you can definitely solve this one. Anybody want to try? 2113? Well, using the general tenet that Eric is always right, she says 2113. Well, is it right or wrong? Let's write it out. 2113 gives us what string for A? 10111. Then two ones give us two ones. And 1, 3 gives us 1, 0. That's 2, 1, 1, 3 for A. And what about for B? 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. And that's fine, because Erica, because she's a human, does have a post-correspondence problem solution embedded somewhere in her organic makeup, and she just solves these things. I don't know how she got that. But that's right. That's a solution. How could you write a program to do what Erica just did? If there were an answer to guarantee you would find it, how would you do it? No, you could, you could, you could find it if there was an answer. And six strings, you could just, I mean, likely get to a point where you could sense that there was no way to go other than repetition I would. Well, I'm not looking for a way to know that the answer is no, because there isn't any way. Right, right. I'm looking for a way just to make sure that if the answer happens to be yes, that we find it. Yeah, you can just start Try trying. Combinations. Yeah, so let's be specific. We always say stuff like that. Oh, just do it by brute force, you know. And I, I, I can't remember how many times when I was told that, that I thought, yeah, I'm glad you're not telling me to do it, because I'm not quite sure how to do it. So in this case, it isn't too hard. But let's say what we specifically mean by trying it by brute force. Let's try all the sequences that have length 1. Here they are. OK? Just 1. That doesn't work, that doesn't work, that doesn't work. OK, let's go on to the sequences of length 2. How many are there? There's 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3. 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 1, 3, 2, 3, 3, right? So there's three of the sequences of length 1, nine sequences of length 2. How many sequences of length 3? No, I think it's 3, 3 to the 1, 3 squared, 3 cubed, so it's 27. And then there's 81 sequences of length 4, because you've got four spots and three choices for each spot. So that's probably how Erica did it. She went through all the 81 sequences of length 4, and one of them worked. No, she didn't do it that way, but that's how a machine would do it, right? And a machine could definitely do that. You could have the machine generate these sequences, check them by concatenating the strings, and if it ever finds that the two are equal, it would stop and say yes. And that's not an algorithm or a decision algorithm, because it could easily run forever and never tell you no. That algorithm never says no. It just says yes when the answer is yes. If the answer is no, it just runs forever. That's why sometimes when we think of a problem as undecidable, we think of one half of it being kind of partially decidable. Okay, undecidable doesn't mean you can't answer both sides of the question. It just means it, it mean, you, you might be able to answer one side of the question, but that's not very interesting. Because if the answer is the other side, you'll be sitting there forever. OK, so that's a review of the post-correspondence problem. Are there questions about this? So this one's got a solution, this one doesn't. No algorithm anybody knows that is possible to, uh, to solve it in general. 
What we're going to do now is connect this to questions about